Brother Carter. All right. Oh, okay, so I want to learn how to use a fiber lake and he wants to learn how to use a CO2. But another thing, um, we hit 1K subscribers, so we're going to be donating to a charity. What charity? I don't know. Dad, what charity? Well, I'm having to operate the camera because our camera guy laid out. But I thought that I would give you all the option because we did say we were going to donate $1,000 to charity, right? But we didn't really designate which charity. So I thought I would give the option to donate, either pay off some school lunch account balances or maybe donate some money to the children's home down the road. And we can actually go on a shopping spree and buy some cool stuff for the, the children's home if you wanted to do that. I like the sound of the children's home. Um, the lunch accounts. You want to do the lunch accounts and you want to do the children's home? Well, I think they're both very valiant efforts at uh, doing something cool. So we could probably split them and do 500 to each. Huh? And maybe with any luck, the school won't have that many people that owe money on their lunch account. I hope. And then we can just spend some more money on the children's home, huh? Mm -hmm. I like the sound of that. Cool deal. All right. Well, thank you guys for helping us get a thousand subscribers. And do y'all want to know who my one thousandth subscriber was? Hey, Dad. Guess what? What? You have nine hundred ninety-nine subscribers. Dude, wait, why does the button say subscribe? Um, me? I'm like, how in the world are we going to have a YouTube channel for three months and you haven't subscribed? <clears throat> oh, well, it's okay. He's subscribed now, right? Oh, yeah. And so it cost me a thousand bucks, but it's all for a good thing, right? That's right. Thank you guys. Y'all are the real winners. So I wanted to start out with the definition of tolerance. And tolerance has many definitions. Uh, the ability or willingness to tolerate something in particular, etc. It's kind of like your customer. The capacity to endure, excuse me, the capacity to endure continued subjection to something especially a drug, transplant, and a general environmental condition, like the Rona. <laughs> and the last one, the most important one in our equation tonight, is an allowable amount of variation of a specified quantity, especially in the dimension of a machine or part. 250 parts in his cars were made to tolerance of one thousandth of an inch. Now, that word tolerance is is thrown around pretty loose in in the industry. I'll come over here where you can see me. And I got a couple of things I want to get on camera here. But the uh, the ability to be able to repeat a job is super important. And in some of my videos you've seen before that I use focus sticks. I've been training people on how to use these. It's like people ask me, uh, what do I need for the class? And I'm sure that lots of people can chime in. For years I'm telling them, oh, you need this, 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 and some wooden yardsticks. And they're not used for units of measurement. These are non-standard units of measurement, actually. I know they still have numbers. And I still do measure boxes with them and stuff occasionally. I don't pick them up and snatch them out real quick. But the main reason I wanted to show you these two focal sticks is because they're both for 300 millimeter lenses. And they're both from the same manufacturer, OPEX lens. And that is the approximate difference in focal distance. And you can see they're nice and flush on this end. And I mean, there's a good three quarters of an inch difference in the focal point of these two lenses that are exactly the same. Or at least that's what the box says. So the main thing I want to convey tonight is 
more and more and more and more people are, you know, they're still getting upset because people won't share settings. And I get 75% of the not sharing of the settings is because people did just throw money away to learn how to do it. And, and then people come along and say, hey, what's your settings? And it's, I mean, it's a little bit off-putting in that regard. But another reason people don't share settings is because it really doesn't work that way. And that's why I wanted to talk about tolerances. So I'm a digital technician for the most part. It's what I do during my day job. I've got a degree, uh, work on robots. I don't do that anymore. But in any event, I've been in the industry for a long time. And what I know is the word tolerance gets thrown around a lot. And you take two machines, put them right beside each other, come from the same place, built at the same time, and they'll have uh, minute differences in settings to achieve the same result because of tolerances. And you take a laser, for instance. The things that can have a tolerance in lasers are the power supplies, the source itself, the resistance of the control card, the different tolerances of the lens, and any number of things in between. The density of the fiber optic cable, how well the source was doped with the radiation. Lots of different things play into the fact that these things, like I've said before, are like fingerprints. They all look the same, but very much different, and they can identify each individual. Now what I have learned is more times than not the lenses themselves carry more of the significance in anything case in point i bought 250 watt lasers within a couple of weeks of each other and long story short of it they had different settings to achieve the same thing and i accidentally switched lenses one night and found out that the settings followed the lens which that was that was an isolated incident i do believe because both of those lasers were within a few serial numbers of being built right beside each other because I bought them in a week of each other. So it stands to reason they were batch built. Got the power supplies off the same pilot, the sources off the same pilot, what have you. But the lenses maybe have been bought at a different time, whatever. But the tolerances in the machines are huge. Most Digital electronics carry a 10% tolerance, and that is up or down. So let's take your run-of-the-mill 50-watt laser. Well, by spec standards, it could be 45.1 watts all the way to 54.99 watts. Because that's 10% of the 50 within reason. So you try to share settings with the next guy that has a 50 watt, well, let's just say his was on the low end of that tolerance. Let's say his 50 watt is truly 46, and your 50 watt is truly 54. Your settings will never work for him. And if it was vice versa, and he'd give you settings, and you would burn up your item, because the settings he used are for a 40 or 50 watt laser that is actually 46 and he gives you settings for a 50 watt laser that's actually 54 and you're going to burn something up because you're hitting it with a good bit of difference in the wattage and now that doesn't stand true and it's probably not that great of a difference but it could be it definitely could be same thing with the lenses i'm telling you right now case in point these lenses right here are the same thing, identical in every shape, form, and fashion other than the actual focus. Here, my actual focal distance is different. So, that is the major reason that you cannot share settings. Settings can't be bought. And like I've said before, when we can get you into the ballpark, you're going to have to go find your seat yourself. I believe uh, Jimmy Johnson, the third, he had made a comment on one of the pages. Does anyone have starting settings for uh, powder coated tumblers? I believe is what he said. And and I hope when you watch this video, what I said didn't sound brandish. But this is why. Um, said, and I, hopefully the starting settings I gave you would be beneficial to help you get into the right direction. 
but full disclaimer here on the fiber laser cups are never meant to be done on the fiber. The fiber lasers are meant to remove material. The CO2 is always going to be the preferred method of delivery on your cups. And I told him in that post to be prepared to ruin a cup on every run, even if you think you know what you're doing. And what I meant by that is there's tolerance again. There's another absolute perfect example of tolerance. Many of you order cups from uh, Amazon or any other number of places that you can order cups from. Well, you get a batch of cups in. Well, that's a different batch. Like I got cups up here from uh, JBS and it's got the, the PO number on the side of it. The PO number is basically the batch number. And if you get five cases of cups and that PO number is different on any of those cases, then you potentially have an issue with the settings because it worked fine for four cases, then all of a sudden it didn't work. Well, that's because they were made and built and painted at a different time, powder coated, whatever you want to call it. So the, the difference in the coating thickness, the batch of the coating materials, does it have more of this element in this one than that? What, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing and lots of things. Flooring, if you go and buy flooring, you need to make sure all the floor matches the same lot and batch number, or you potentially could be getting two different colors. So it's the same thing with cups. If you do them on the fiber, you always plan to waste one fine-tuning your cups in. Now, hey, 60% of the time, the settings that you used last time will work again. But that 40% is gonna cost you a cup every time. You're either gonna end up wasting the eight bucks on the cup to figure out the settings for the run, or you're gonna end up with these Rubbermaid totes all over the place with one-off color cups. So, I mean, I'm just telling you from experience. But you can do cups on the fiber. It's very tedious and point one line space is your friend. That's all I got to say about that. But as far as tolerances go, everything has a tolerance. You know, sit back and think about it. Um, some things are held to a higher tolerance than others. You know, nuts and bolts. You, when you get a quarter 20 bolt or an M6 by one for your base, it usually threads in there because it is within a certain tolerance. If it wasn't within that tolerance, it wouldn't thread down in there. So I'm not sure if there's any standards that hold lasers to that close of a tolerance. I would imagine that it's going to hold true with just about anything else in the world. You're going to have that 10% band. Unless you're dealing with medical equipment and things of that nature, and then they have 5% and as low as 3 to 2%. So I imagine that these are not held to anywhere near the standards of that, nor are the power supplies nor are the fiber cables that actually run in the umbilical from the control cabinet to your, your head. Uh, you've got the tolerances in the resistance of the galvanometers. There's a huge thing too. The, the, the galvo head itself has its own set of tolerance, you know, where it's supposed to travel X amount of degrees or what have you, you know. So take these things into consideration in your quest and hunt to peck, but I've said it numerous times, you've got to burn it if you really want to learn it. So um, that's that. If you want some help one-on-one -on -one coaching or whatever, you can always go to our website, fiberlasertraining.com, book you some time one-on-one, -on -one, ask as many questions about anything these lasers can do or you want them to do, or even if it's just about trying to get some more business in your, your side of the world, we can do it to it. So really appreciate you watching. And go get you your laser operator shirt and use that code from last time. Without further ado, dad, dad jokes. What did the baby cow want to be when it grew up? I don't know. It wanted to have its own milk channel. Moo tube channel. <laughs> he wanted to be a moo tube influencer. It's pretty good. I guess that he's a moo tuber. He's a moo tuber. That's great. Fantastic. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned a lot. We really appreciate all the support. Uh, those coupon codes are still good in any of my past videos. Go so check them out. We really appreciate that. We still got a few t shirts left, not many, but we still got a few. So, thanks a lot.